and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in the previous lecture, we saw how uh, a statistical problem is phrased and how one needs to think in the big picture about uh, the problem. And then we said we will look closely at one small piece of it, which is the analysis part uh, within the probabilistic statistical setting. So one such uh, method or procedure or you know, statistical uh, analysis method, I would say more than analysis, I would say it's like a procedure for uh, uh, doing a statistical procedure is something called parameter estimation. Okay, so this shows up quite often uh, within the realm of a bigger uh, statistical problem. So you you will you'll, you'll think of the problem, break it down, break it down, and finally you'll have to find one parameter which is missing in your model using data. Okay, data samples are come have come and you have a model for it, and there's a parameter missing. So you have to find a parameter, and uh, so your 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 model is uh, parameterized by something and you have to find that parameter. So this is very typical and uh, what we will see first in this uh, uh, next few set of lectures is given a problem like that, how do you go about finding a parameter from samples? Okay, So we have already seen before that IID samples contain a lot of information about the underlying distribution. So from the distribution, if there is a missing parameter, how do you find that parameter? So that is the problem of parameter estimation. Okay, So let us see a few illustrative examples, I will just show you some examples. The first and the I would say the very typical example with which we will again and again introduce new ideas is this Bernoulli P trials. Okay, so it's a very simple example, but it still has within it a lot of meaning and I know a lot of ideas can be explained very easily using Bernoulli trials. So I will use this example over and over again to illustrate important ideas. Okay, so what is the setting? So there are n Bernoulli P trials. Okay, so there is a trial which you repeat n times independently, identically. Every trial is successful with a probability p, not successful with a probability 1 minus p. Okay, and this p is the unknown parameter. Okay, there is an underlying distribution, IID samples are coming out, the parameter p is unknown. In this case, the parameter is just one parameter p, it lies between 0 and 1, it is a probability of success, and that is unknown. Okay, so here is one set of samples, I have just pulled it out, some 10 samples from this Bernoulli trial 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. It could be anything else also. I repeat it the next time, I may get another set of samples, right? So this is how it will look, okay, just to be very clear. So the, so I put here, can you guess P, okay, so or can you estimate the value of P given these samples, okay? So that's the sort of question we are going to look at. Okay, maybe 10 samples is too small, you don't want to commit to a value of P from 10 samples, but, but you know, maybe 100, 100 samples are given, maybe 500 samples are given then can you say with some more confidence as to what p can be okay so that's the essential nature of this this kind of a parameter estimation problem it's clear right there's a parameter of the unknown distribution underlying distribution you're getting iid samples from the distribution can you use the samples and estimate the value for the parameter okay so that's the example okay so it's a simple problem uh, hopefully this is clear uh, this is the this is a typical problem i'll come back to this again and again uh, whenever I want to illustrate an idea, whenever I want an example, the first example I will come back to is Bernoulli P trials. Okay, so remember that. So, so let us uh, look at a few more examples where this notion of IID samples from a distribution with the parameter unknown and us trying to find the parameter shows up. Okay, so it shows up quite a bit in scientific experiments, particularly in engineering applications. Okay, so here is a scientific exper uh, experiment that is very common. If you have a radioactive substance, uh, you know, it puts out some particles, you know, that is the meaning of radioactivity, right? Some particles come out of it and uh, now one, one such particle is the alpha particle, I think it is uh, 2 neutrons plus 2 protons, just the nucleus of helium for instance. So it is uh, it's called an alpha particle and uh, this is a very common emission and uh, the theory is that you can model the number of particles emitted within a fixed time period, like for instance here a 10 second interval you can model it as a Poisson distribution. Okay, so, so several experiments have been done and there is also some theoretical reasons for why uh, it can be expected to be a Poisson distribution. We know the Poisson distribution very well, right? It could be zero particles, one particle, two particle, three particle, four particle like that and what is the probability that n particles are put out in a 10 second interval? It is e power minus lambda, lambda power n by n factorial. Now, depending on the actual substance, actual radioactive substance that you have, this lambda may vary. Okay, so one 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 uh, one type of say uranium or something will have uh, one one type of lambda. Some other uh, plutonium or something may have some other lambda. Okay, so the lambda may vary from one radioactive substance to another 
but the model remains the same. So this lambda is an unknown uh, parameter of your distribution. Okay, so, so if you have an unknown radioactive substance, you are counting the alpha particles using some counter and then you get the data. You have to go back and find the lambda from the data, right? So that's the problem of parameter estimation. Once again, here are samples from one observation. I've taken this from uh, John Rice's book that I described in the previous lecture, okay? So you can see uh, this data is here, uh, you know, 0 to 2 particles uh, came out uh, 18, 18 intervals. So you observe number of alpha particles over several intervals here. I think there are some 2700 intervals or something. So 18 of those intervals, 0 to 2 particles were observed. Uh, 5 of those intervals, 17 plus particles were observed and etc, etc. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the data. So from a data like this, you have to now find alpha, lambda, right? What is lambda? That's the parameter estimation problem. Again, a typical parameter estimation problem. This kind of problem shows up quite a bit in uh, modeling. Uh, so there is a, notice there is an underlying distribution. In this case, it's Poisson. Uh, there's an unknown parameter there. And uh, from the samples that you did in one observation, uh, you have to find the lambda, okay? So remember again, this is uh, one measurement, okay? One, one time interval, 2,700 intervals of 10 seconds each, you did a measurement. Tomorrow you come back and repeat it, you may get slightly different data. Right? For the same substance, you may get slightly different data. Right? So that's some nature of the problem. Right? That's how these IID samplings work. Okay? One sampling will give you one type of data. Next sample will give you another data. But you know, within that, you have to operate and come up with a procedure to find the lambda uh, reliably and correctly. Okay? So may maybe not too different. It will be some somewhat similar, but one or two, I mean, it won't be the exact same number. Okay? Keep that in mind. So this is another example. Okay. There are many more examples like this. I just want to give one more example, which is uh, noise in electronic circuits. So if you have a circuit and uh, you want to measure the voltage or current, uh, you will see over time, even though nothing else is changing in the circuit, you expect the voltage or current to be the same, you will see some random fluctuations. If you, if you keep measuring with very uh, sensitive measurement instruments, you will see there will be these random fluctuations over time. Okay. So that's because of some various noise processes that happen. Uh, with electrons and other things that are there in the circuit. And uh, so it's very typical to model the voltage or current as a Gaussian distributed random variable. Okay, uh, It will have a certain mean, it will have a certain variance. So now you have measurements. Now you can you can do IID measurements of the voltage. Okay, So you can keep making measurement over and over and over again. Every time you measure, it's independent and identical measurement. So the underlying distribution here now is Gaussian. It's normal, it's got two parameters. There's a parameter mu, there's a parameter sigma square, okay? So now if you do IID repetitions of uh, the measurement, let's say 10 measurements, you may get something like this, 1.07, 1.88, okay? From these kind of measurements, you may ask what is mu? You may ask what is sigma, okay? So you notice here the small difference between the previous two examples. In the previous two examples, there was only one parameter. So here you have two parameters. Okay. You can also have three parameters, you can have four parameters, you can have any number of parameters for your uh, unknown distribution, depending on how the distribution is, right? So maybe your distribution is, uh, you know, two Gaussians, uh, you know, mixed up, right? So then you'll have four different uh, parameters to work with, things like that, right? So it, you can have various types of underlying distributions and you may have access to IID samples from that distribution. There's an unknown parameter for that distribution. Can you find the parameter from the samples? Okay, so that is essentially the parameter estimation problem. I hope it's clear to you. Uh, this is one small procedure that may fit into several statistical analysis methods, but this procedure you should know really, really well. It's a foundational procedure which you should uh, really be able to. Any Anybody tomorrow comes and gives you a distribution and says, hey, here are IID samples from this distribution. I know for sure it's from this distribution. There are, there are unknown parameters of the distribution. Can you find out these unknown parameters for me? You should be able to go ahead and do that, okay? So that's the parameter estimation problem. So here is the setting. I put it out uh, the, based on the previous observations. Here is how the setting goes. You have IID samples X1 to Xn from a common unknown distribution. X, it's, the distribution itself is not totally unknown. It could be in which case uh, it's a bit more complicated, but uh, let's say you know that it has some distribution which, is, which has a few parameters, okay? In general, these parameters are called theta. In most statistics textbooks, you'll see they call called theta, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. You may have any number of parameters, okay? They may sometimes be collected into one vector that they will call theta. And you know, so let's just say theta 1, theta 2, etc. Uh, we'll assume these parameters are real valued. 
uh, each theta is r it could be integer or something also so then you have to adjust but generally we will take it as real value and the parameter estimation problem asks you what is theta 1 what is theta 2 can you estimate theta 1 estimate theta 2 okay so that's the question all right so we will we'll see slowly some features of this process and what's possible what's not possible what are the kind of uh, assurances you can give about your estimate it's it's i mean you, you can't just say randomly some value for theta right that's not the point of this exercise it should be it should depend on the samples you should you should have some intelligent answer which you can justify also that's also important okay so what is an estimator okay so we have talked about the estimation problem the estimation problem the solution for an estimation problem is something called an estimator okay the estimator for a parameter theta okay some parameter theta of the underlying distribution is a function of the samples okay so you have n samples x1 through xn and this function usually is denoted theta hat so you see that hat on top of theta okay on small inverted uh, some triangle type shape so that's the angle type shape so that is the hat it's called okay so it's very common to denote the estimator of theta as theta hat okay and what is that theta hat it's a function of the samples you give it the samples this function will put out some value some real number and that real number you're assuming is an estimate of theta okay so not assuming you're supposing or that's what you're desiring okay to be an estimate of theta so an estimator remember once again is a function it's a function of the n iid random variables x1 through xn is that okay so the estimator is a function you give it the samples it will put out some real number okay the output is a real number input as all the samples output is a real number and uh, that number is a uh, is considered the estimate okay so i put random variables here remember x1 x2 xn are random variables but in any particular instance you will get one set of samples some one two three whatever number you put it in you will get a number okay but remember x1 to xn are random variables okay so one needs to know this clear difference between the parameter and the estimator okay theta is a constant parameter it's not a random variable it's some number uh, some unknown number that's all it's a variable it's not random in some sense okay now theta hat is a function of n random variables therefore it is a random variable okay so uh, it will have a distribution it will have a pmf it will have a pdf okay so in one sampling theta hat will give you one value another sampling it will give you some other value another sampling it will give you some other value right because depending on the actual realization of the samples the function theta hat will change okay so x1 through xn is in general they are random variables so theta hat of x1 to xn will also be a random variable okay depending on the actual samples it will take some particular value it will take different values with different probabilities which means it has a distribution of its own okay even though it has a distribution we are expecting that this theta hat will take values around theta okay theta is some fixed value theta hat is a random variable it has a distribution okay it's pdf or pmf or something and you're imagining if theta is here the theta hat will always be somewhere around theta right you can't have some theta hat being some random thing independent of theta right so so you're hoping to design a theta hat design a function so that its distribution is concentrated or it gives you values around theta in some predictable way okay so you can give some guarantees on that okay so that's how we will work okay but so have that picture in mind okay you have samples according to some distribution the distribution has a parameter theta it's some number and you want to find a function of the samples which will be a random variable it will have a distribution pdf or pmf and you're hoping that pdf or pmf gives you values mostly around the actual theta which is the unknown parameter okay so that's how estimation works it's the only thing we can do right you, we don't know theta ahead of time so you can't exactly predict what theta will be okay so estimation will only put out a random variable and uh, the estimator is a random variable it will have a certain distribution so you can only give those kind of guarantees okay so hopefully this is clear you can go back to the previous example say put out all of them follow this same sort of a picture so the question is how do you come up with these estimators and all that we will see that slowly you know how to characterize good estimators how to design good estimators we will see them slowly in the rest of the lectures okay so here's an example like i said I, i'll keep going back to this bernoulli p trials over and over again it's a very simple example but still it's very useful to get a lot of ideas across okay x1 through xn are iid bernoulli p the parameters p you know 
okay so i told you i'll call it theta in general case when it's unknown i will call it theta in a specific case like bernoulli the parameter is p there's no need to call it theta or anything right here are three different estimators okay you may already have a background or you may already think one is a good estimator one is not a good estimator etc but let's just see the three estimators there are three estimators all three are valid estimators remember the estimator is some function from the samples to reals as long as it gives you that it's a valid estimator right whether it's a good estimator or not is a different question we'll come to that later but these are all valid estimators look at the first one p1 hat it is just saying half right 1 by 2 i don't care what the samples are i won't even look at the samples i will simply say p is equal to 1 by 2 okay always right it doesn't sound like a good estimator right so good estimator presumably will use the samples okay so this one doesn't look like a good estimator but like i said whether it's good or bad it's a valid estimator well estimator is just a function i defined it as a function from the samples to the numbers if you choose to ignore the samples it's still a valid function in some sense okay so it's not wrong uh, estimator 2 is a sounds a little bit better it's at least using the first two samples okay but it's only using the two samples okay so immediately you should think you know when there are n samples given to you, you you should probably use all the n samples right because p affects every sample right according to p every sample is being distributed right that's how every sample is being chosen so you probably have to use all the samples but if you're using only two maybe you don't get that good an estimate estimator but you're expecting p2 hat to be slightly better than p1 hat right because it's at least using the first two samples okay x1 plus x2 divided by 2 Okay, that's my P two. Now, third estimator looks a little bit more smart, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more meaningful. Maybe you can read multiple meanings into it. But nevertheless, let's just say what it is. It is x one plus x two plus x n divided by n. Okay, this this good merit in this uh, P three hat. It's a very smart estimator. We'll come back and see why that's a smart estimator later on. But anyway, these three are clearly valid estimators. What do we mean by valid estimator? What is an estimator? function from samples to the real line okay i can have any function i'm just showing you three functions it turns out you can have any functions an infinite number of estimators are possible i can say 2x1 minus x2 divided by nothing it's 2x1 minus x2 why not it's a valid estimator okay right any anything you can do x1 plus 2 x2 plus 3 x3 divided by i don't know 6 i don't know who cares you know so any function that you come up with it will be a valid estimator okay validity doesn't mean that it's good okay to be a good estimator we have to think about how to characterize we don't even know how to characterize what's a good metric we know from a high level that the estimator whatever estimator i come up with is going to have a distribution and i have to characterize whether or not the distribution is around the real theta right that's my that's my goal but how to go about writing it down clearly precisely mathematically how to develop good metrics for how good a estimator will be and how to go about designing those estimators which will give you good values for those metrics okay so that will be the topic of the next few lectures thank you very much